intention, it was an idea. An idea that a gentleman by the name of Tony Bergmeier had. He wanted to bring the sights, the sounds of Germany here to Kitchener and to breathe some life into downtown Kitchener. It was his idea. And 21 years later, we all share in that same vision that he had all those years ago. And we are so pleased to have joining us here this evening the gentleman who is the true founder of Chris Kindle Market here in Kitchener, Waterloo, Mr. Tony Bergmeier. Tony, where are you? Oh, he's going to come up. I was fortunate enough to get a selfie with Tony last year during the 20th anniversary Chris Kindle Market. I'm hoping to get another one to match the set. Tony came up as part of a, a package up here. He came up with somebody who is extremely busy when it comes to the Chris Kindle market. For many of us, the market happens in December. For the organizing committee, though, the Chris Kindle market happens year-round. I actually met with our next guest back in May to start talking about some of the things that were going on, and she works year-round at it. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the president of the Chris Kindle organizing market, Monica Reed, to say a few words. It's wonderful to see everybody here on this square, this feeling right now. Oh, the gentle snow falling on our noses and the smells of the special season and the music we like to sing. It's magical, don't you think? Well, I think Tony actually puts a, a reserve order in for the snow at about 6 to 6.30, don't you, Tony? <laughs> I, I don't really have that high connections. It's pure luck. <laughs> well, you know, there's something I have learned from one of my two mentors. One is here with me, Tony, and the other is not, uh, Astrid Drawn. And there are, there are three things that really fuel our passion for continuing to bring you this centuries-old festival. Um, to stir the joy in the children, to make lifelong memories, and most of all, to bring the child out in each of us. And that is only possible through the generosity of all the sponsors and the friends that support us, that allow us to make this festival a free admission. Thanks go to our presenting sponsor, who you heard from earlier, Hefner Lexus Toyota, for partnering with us for 21 years. But you'll see many others on our stage banner, as well as our information booth. Please say that you have been here and that you enjoyed the market if you do. It's also made possible through our year-long hardworking volunteer committee who couldn't make it up on stage, but are all right here chilling. And if any of you have talents or support you'd love to offer, we'd love to hear from you. Please let your friends know that the next four days are filled with bands, choirs, dance groups, nativity, blacksmiths, puppet shows, sing-along, horse-drawn carriage rides, trains, and our well-loved folklore characters and angels, and Chris Kindle and Knecht Rubrecht, who I think you might see today. If you are interested in learning more about our 700-year traditions, please take some time to hear about it from the experts James Skidmore of University of Waterloo's Waterloo Center for German Studies. His talk last week about the German Christmas traditions will be playing in on the hour upstairs in the learning room, and we'll also have that on our website. For information on our entertainment and the 95 vendors, uh, please ask anybody with the, one of these um, band, fluorescent bandanas on and uh, visit our website, engage with us on Facebook and Twitter, and thank you so much for being with us today. Tony, would you like to say hello? Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to stand up here. Yeah, actually, it could be a little bit uh, warmer, but uh, other than that, that's quite nice. And, you know, when I looked out straight at that uh, wonderful Christmas tree in front of us, it brings back memories. 
the first time <laughs> when I uh, asked, when I started out the Chris Kittle Market, I said, I want a real Christmas tree. And uh, of course, uh, it, it was not that simple in those days. I was told that I should get one cut out out of plywood and yes. paint it nicely yes. and we can reuse that every year. And uh, I was not quite really in favor of that. So, as I said, I had to uh, uh, make a presentation at that uh, at the council meeting and uh, I was able to convince them that we should have a real tree. And of course, what happens is those trees, and that's what I explained to them at the time, that uh, those trees, they come from houses where they had outlived their welcome. Uh, people, they, they usually they buy a new house and then they put up a little tree because it looks nice in front of their living room and about 15 years later or thereabouts, they find out that they can no longer look out of the window and that's when we get those trees. They get, we always get the trees offered and uh, they have a wonderful final big show in, in their, their lifespan. Woo!